Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Colleen and you, this channel is called Our Silver Moments and I'm pleased to have you back here today. I, I wasn't planning on making a video today but I started to think about what it was I was going to do and I thought hmm, maybe some of you would be interested. I've had quite a bit of interest in the bread machine recipes that I posted earlier and um, so I thought well maybe I could introduce you to a couple of uh, recipes that would be appropriate for the Christmas season. So today we're going to make um, a Christmas bread in the bread machine and also cinnamon raisin bread which we love to have um, for toast just butter toast and so I'm gonna get the bread machine out I'll get out the ingredients and we'll get started <music> This looks like a lot of stuff out here, but um, it goes all together pretty quickly. So uh, let's just get started. I have in my measuring cup, one cup of lukewarm milk. Now, honestly, I ran short of milk. So I just, I had uh, two thirds of the cup and I just filled the rest with water because we're gonna put a, quite a few rich things into this. I didn't think that that would make a big difference. So we are uh, going to need to feed our yeast and we're going to do that with two tablespoons of sugar, just plain white sugar. And then we are going to add some butter to this. So I need two tablespoons of room temperature butter. And I'm just going to use my tablespoon here. I don't think this is so exacting that um, if you had a little more or a little less that it would make a difference, but you would not want to change it up too much because, um, well, recipes are tried and true for a reason, especially in baking. Somebody has worked really hard at some point to come up with this recipe for you. So now I'm going to, I've got most of my no, I'm not quite all of my liquids in, so I'm going to put my liquids in first. I'm going to add a teaspoon of vanilla. And I thought I had a teaspoon out here, right in front of me. Had it in my hand, I'm sure. Put it down. Uh, a teaspoon of vanilla. I need about a half a teaspoon of lemon juice just for a little bit of flavoring. Okay, I have all my liquids in there. Now I'm going to add one and a half teaspoons of yeast to the pan. Make sure that's the right amount. Yes, one and a half teaspoons of yeast. And now I can start to add the other ingredients. So. And as I say that all, I look down and here's the eggs sitting in front of me. So I know that I need to use the eggs in this recipe. I am not using the whole egg. I am using the yolks only. And I am going to save the whites for a project a bit later. Now, these are extra large eggs, so keep that in mind when you're making this recipe. I measured it out and I need three extra large yolks to make one quarter of a cup of yolks, which is what I need. And if you're using smaller eggs, then you're definitely going to have to add another egg to it. But this is one of those recipes that you're going to have to look at as you go along anyway. When the bread starts to knead, you're gonna lift the lid and you're gonna to check to see if the bread looks like it's forming a good ball or if it's really sticky and if it's really sticky it could uh, you could definitely add a bit more flour to it but you want to do that in very small increments like a tablespoon at a time because it can get out of the, out of the pan quite quickly now I'm going to add some flour to this 
I'm going to add three cups and I'm just using regular old all-purpose flour. Uh, you may have a different result with bread machine flour, I'm not sure. Um, I use all-purpose flour for everything unless it's a cake that really requires it to be um, cake or pastry flour and I don't do a lot of those so there I've got three cups of flour in there I'm going to add one teaspoon one teaspoon maybe a little under that of salt now I'm going to have a look around and make sure that I've gotten everything that um, I have laid out and I don't I have right here the um, rind, grated rind of uh, a lemon or one and a half teaspoons and I'm going to put that in there as well. Now, this it's really important that you know um, to have a look at the, the, the dough part way through. Um, normally when I, all of my other recipes that I make on a regular basis, I just put the ingredients in and I never lift the lid. But because this one has a couple of extra ingredients in it, and because we've had a great snowstorm overnight, I wanted to say horrible, but we need the snow so bad to replenish the water supply. Uh, we had a, about uh, seven or eight inches of snow last night, and now it's warmed up. <laughs> so anything that falls today, it's drizzling right now, it's gonna be rain. So our crews are out and they are trying to get all the roadways cleared and um, it's a good day to be in bacon bread. But I got off track there. Uh, the flour can take on moisture from the air. So if your house happens to be more humid or if it's like today where it's raining outside, your flour can be holding on to more moisture than it normally would. So it's important to have a look. So part way through, when it's kneading, maybe five minutes in, lift the lid, have a look. If it looks like it's way too sticky at the five minute mark, it's going to be too sticky. Add a tablespoon of flour and then look again and let it paddle through it a few times, look again. Uh, you don't want to put too much flour into it, but when you touch it, it should be tacky, not sticky and um, then you'd have a good result. So I'm going to put the pan into my um, into its home, <laughs> into my bread maker and I am going to set it on the dough setting and um, when it's running I will come back and tell you what we're going to do with all the fruit that's going into this pan, loaf pan. Now I'm going to add fruit. This is Christmas bread after all. So I'm going to add some fruit. I have a mixture here. It's called the glaze mix and it's just candied peels. Um, I could tell you maybe what's in here or maybe I can't. Oh yes, on the lid, on the lid. Ingredients, papaya, rutabaga, orange peel, cherries, pineapple, lemon peel, citric acid, potassium sorbate, few other things that I don't want to say um, but those are the main ingredients that are in here and I'm going to add about two-thirds of a cup of the peel and then I'm going to add two-thirds of a cup of raisins these are um, I want to say Thompson's raisins I don't know they're the lighter colored raisin golden I guess yes they're golden and I live in Golden, so about two-thirds of a cup again, maybe take back a little bit, there we go, and last but not least to this batch I'm going to try adding dried cranberries, now I'm, because it's only um, a small loaf I'm not sure how much this fruit's going to get absorbed, so I'm not going to get too clear, I'm going to say maybe a third of a cup and I'm going to break these apart a little bit to this fruit oops I should have been timing that 
I'm going to set my timer right now because I want to time how long this is kneading because we want to add the fruit in at the 10 minute mark of the kneading process. If we put it in any earlier than that, it is going to crush it to mush, which is okay. It's just not as pretty. It would still taste perfectly fine. But, so, I've guessed that two minutes have elapsed. I set eight minutes on my timer. And now I'm going to add just a little bit of flour. Maybe about a tablespoon of flour. Maybe not quite that much even. To my fruit. Because I don't want to introduce the fruit without having some of the flour stuck to it. I believe that it will incorporate better into the rest of the flour if there's a bit of flour on it and it's not so sticky. So there you go. Now at the 10 minute mark, when my timer goes off, I'm going to add this into the bread machine on the kneading process, during the kneading process and um, hope that most of this will get incorporated, although I'm using a lot more than I usually use. I should say a lot more, a third of a cup more. Um, we will um, come back at that point and um, get this into the pan. And then uh, when it's all mixed up, I'll bring you back and we'll uh, form it into a loaf and get it into a loaf pan for the oven. Now, if you enjoy making this recipe and you want it to be more like a panettone like an italian style bread your bread machine if it's the same style as mine that has the bread loaf that rises up you may want to bake it right in there just for points for style or you could get the panettone um, baking liners i think you could probably find them on amazon and you can get the baking liners and um, dump all the dough once it's finished the dough cycle dump it into the baking liner and put it into the oven and cook it in the baking liner so entirely up to you well the timer has just gone off on my bread machine to tell me that my Christmas bread is ready so I'm going to get it out and we'll go to work on getting it in the pan now it is definitely doubled in size which is good feels good on the surface. I'm just going to add a tiny bit of flour. I don't think I need very much. It is a stickier dough, but I don't want it to stick to my hands, so I'm going to work it this way. I had um, someone ask me yesterday um, how I, what I use to sanitize my counters before I put bread on them, and quite honestly, I don't sanitize my counters. I just take a clean uh, washcloth and uh, soap it up a little bit. I wipe down my counters, I rinse them, and then I dry them before I do this process. So I, uh, I don't sanitize them. I'm sure that there are kitchens that do, but mine is not one. Now I think this is a little softer today, not only because of the weather, but because of the fruit, the dried fruits were a little more moist. Now I am going to give this a mix, not too heartily. Now I've had a little change of plan. And I changed the plan because I felt like this was going to be too much dough to go into a standard bread pan and have a complete rise. So I have taken my seven inch spring form pan. This is an experiment so far. And I have lined it with um, two sheets of uh, parchment paper. And I am going to, hopefully that'll stand up as well as um, the panettone liners. And I am going to put the bread dough right into the bottom of the pan. Not only did I uh, 
put in the parchment paper, but I also I also sprayed everything down with just a cooking oil. I think this one is coconut, um, just to help it um, release better. Now, right now, the level of the bread in a seven inch pan is right up to the edge here. I am going to let this uh, rise for about an hour and I'll see where it's at. Um, it's pretty fruity, so I might let it go a little bit longer, but that's where we are with it at this moment. And I will be back to show you uh, what it looks like before I put it in the oven. Well, it's a sweet bread kind of day, so I have the um, Christmas bread off to the side and it's on the stove and it's proofing, uh, or no, I should say it's rising, it's second rise. It'll take about an hour, so that frees up the bread machine to get on with the next recipe, which is for uh, raisin, cinnamon raisin bread. So I'm gonna use basically a traditional uh, bread machine white bread recipe for this. I'm going to start with one cup of warm water and I do the baby bottle test on the water. Um, it's gotta be as warm as my wrist in order to be what I need in here. I don't know how everybody does that. I'm sure there's a probably a temperature it should be, but that's how I've always done it. And then I'm going to add two tablespoons of sugar. We have to feed the yeast. And according to this recipe, which seems like a lot to me, but it's been a while since I made white bread, so According to this recipe, I need one package of active dry yeast, which is uh, two and a quarter teaspoons of yeast if you're measuring it out that way. So I'm going to use my tablespoon because a tablespoon is 2.25 teaspoons. So I'm going to use that. And I've got that in there. And then I'm going to start on with the rest of the ingredients. We also need a quarter of a cup of oil. And I'm just using the vegetable oil. I'm not going to tinker around with this too much. And then I need three cups of flour. I'm just going to grab my leveler. And just in it goes. One. Two. And again, I'm just using um, traditional flour. This isn't bread flour, it's just all-purpose flour. And I'm going to add, maybe I'll add the salt first because it won't stick to the spoon quite the same way. I'm going to add a teaspoon of salt. And I'm going to add a teaspoon of cinnamon. Now, I think a teaspoon is good. I'm making one loaf, so that should do it. So I'm just going to run over the ingredients here and make sure I got everything in that needs to go in right now. Yes. So I'm going to get this into the bread machine. I'm going to put it on the dough setting and let it get going. And when I set it on the dough setting, I'm going to wander over and set my timer for 10 minutes because in 10 minutes time, I am going to add the raisins to the mix. So hang in there, we're, we're almost there. Now I'm set with my raisins and I'm gonna get them ready. I know that's making quite a bit of noise, isn't it? Um, I'm going to get them ready to go so that when the 10 minutes is up, I have them ready to put into the, into the mix. So I need one cup. This is a half a cup, so I'll do Oops. These are just golden raisins. I am not rehydrating them, although you definitely could. And I would suggest things like for rehydration, if that's what you wanted to do, to um, maybe soak them in orange juice or apple juice, something that would add some flavor to them. Um, but, or you could just cover them with water and let them sit overnight. 
but then you're going to want to get them really patted dry because they are going to churn inside the bread maker and so any moisture they have, have absorbed is going to be drawn out into the dough which could make your dough softer and um, that may not be what you want to do you may have to then work with it when you um, take it out of the bread machine to add more flour into it so not ideal so i'm just going to uh, keep the raisins as is these are golden raisins which you can just eat by the handful if you happen to be a raisin lover and i'm just going to as i did with the christmas bread just lightly coat the raisins because i think it helps the flour in, that's being mixed um, adhere the raisins. And that was the case with the Christmas bread. You could see that um, it held on to the fruit really well, and I think that's one of the reasons it, it hangs on so well. So, I'm going to set that aside, and when the dinger goes, I'm going to dump those raisins in there into the bread machine. And I literally, it will be unceremoniously, I will dump the whole container in, I'll close the lid, and I will just let it finish out its time. And uh, that's pretty much all you need to know about that. Um, once the bread comes out of the machine, I'll bring you back and show you that process, how I uh, form it into a loaf and get it into a pan. I'll see you soon. I haven't figured out quite how to show this to you, but the top of the bread, now this is a seven inch spring form pan, and I've just put some sheets of parchment paper to make a collar inside the pan. Hopefully this is gonna work. I usually make it in a bread pan, but it rises so high, I, I always worry about it falling over. Anyway, you can see it's well filled right up to here, it has risen. And now it's going to go in a 375 degree oven for probably at least an hour. And if at any point I notice that the crust is getting darker than I want it to be, I'm going to lightly put a piece of tin foil over the top. I'm not going to try to gather it around, just lay it over the top and uh, try to, to keep the crust the way I want it to be. When I think that it's uh, near where it should be to be cooked, then I am going to use a thermometer, which you don't do with regular bread usually. And I'm gonna insert my um, thermometer into the side of the bread, making sure I get right into the center. And I'm going to check to see it needs to be between 90, uh, sorry, 190 and 200 degrees. It could be even a few degrees more. Um, but it needs to be 190 to be cooked all the way through and because this is such a big loaf it's quite deep and dense so you really need to use a thermometer if you have one or you can take your chances and do the tap test and um, do whatever makes you comfortable but um, I would say that that's probably the most accurate way of doing doing it when you're making Christmas bread so into the oven it goes and I'm just going to grease up this pan lightly and then I'm going to dump the dough out if it's going to cooperate with me and I am just going to give it a good squish you don't want to disturb the raisins too much. And I'm going to put it in the pan and then if I've got a little bit of shortening left here I'm just going to give the top of this a little rub of shortening so that it doesn't dry out. Now I'm going to cover this with a kitchen towel. I'm going to set it aside to rise and uh, then I'll be back after it's been an in and out of the oven. So this will go into the oven at 375 and it'll cook around 35 minutes, maybe a little longer. If it's gonna be longer, I'll let you know though. So um, we'll be back soon with all of our fresh baked bread.
And here is the cinnamon raisin bread, fresh out of the oven. And um, I cooked it 35 minutes, which sounds like it's enough. And I'm just going to maybe uh, finish the top with a bit of butter. I'll just um, smooth some on there. I'm just trying to make the soft, the crust a little softer. You can see that the panettone got quite, or the uh, Christmas bread got quite brown. Um, I think I could have perhaps cut down the time a little bit, but um, I know from the way it smells, it's gonna be delicious and we're going to enjoy it a lot. So here are the two breads that I made today uh, using my bread maker and um, they're not only intended for making plain bread. They can be a useful tool for making all kinds of breads. Um, next, I think I might try to show you cheese sticks and pizza dough and I'm not sure what else, but for the time being, these two will help you get through your holidays um, with a great deal of ease. So don't be afraid to give them a try. And as usual, you'll find the recipes down below in the description box. You Right under the video, you'll see where it says more. If you click on more, it will open up the page with the recipes on it. And um, those are my recipes, so you're welcome to use them. And um, I hope that if you've enjoyed this video, you'll consider subscribing if you haven't already. And definitely give it a thumbs up. I look forward to hearing your comments. And I will see you again soon on the next video. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.